I'm Viv Gross. I'm um, a systemic psychotherapist, consultant and trainer in independent practice now, um, having been previously in the public sector in various roles at different times of my life. When I first left university, having done a broad social science degree, um, it was a social administration degree, which was about um, social sciences as applied in the real world, not simply sociology, politics and economics, but how those were applied in the what was then called the welfare state. Um, so I'd had practical placements within my undergraduate degree course in, in probation and in medical social work. Um, I did my postgrad training at the LSE in, uh, it was called um, Diploma in Applied Social Science, but it was the CQSW as we know it now. And um, my first job on qualifying as a social worker was in Camden Social Services. And within the area team, there were two of the team leaders who were doing the foundation course in family, family systems work, which at that time was under the auspices of the Institute of Group Analysis. So those team leaders were doing the foundation course, but they were cascading the ideas down to the whole team of social services that I was a part of. And um, we had little workshops. We had family therapy workshops within the area team. And it was just so exciting. We were just learning about how to think about families systemically. That systemic uh, family therapy workshop within the area team was a real crucible for helping us all think differently about the statutory work we were doing and also the, uh, the much more community-based work that we were doing that didn't really have a statutory underpinning but we were allowed to do it in those days it was fantastic it was preventive work as well as statutory intervention um, and it was during my time there that actually I met Peter Bruggen for the first time I had um, a, a 15 year old boy who was on my caseload he and his mum weren't getting on at all well and um, he disappeared, was <laughs> found uh, finally in Gateshead somewhere, having hitchhiked his way up there. And he was flown back by the police um, straight to Hill End Ad Adolescent Unit. And that was my first experience of inpatient um, work with, with young people. And Peter Bruggen was working systemically. He was part of that group. And he invited the allocated social workers to come to the ward round and, dis and the care planning and so on. And um, he was very facilitative as well of my interest in systemic work and uh, took my ideas on board and and respected me. And I was I was a completely green, newly qualified social worker. I knew nothing, but he listened and was interested in what I thought about this young man and his family. It was a great experience. Um, so that was in, in Camden Social Services that I first came across these ideas and we were given the chance to role play and practice and ask questions within the sort of mini team, within the team, those of us that were interested in systemic work. I think what was really eye-opening, having only recently trained in, in social work, was within this systemic group, within the team, was thinking about the families who were presenting with possibly child protection concerns or children on the threshold of care proceedings, that the systemic way of looking at those difficulties was so much less blaming of parents and it was just so much more encouraging to young practitioners as we were. My career history has been a complete zigzag between um, direct practice with children and families, management within different organisations and teaching, training and supervision. And I've always zigzagged between those. I haven't been compartmentalised, but I have been diverted from different paths by opportunities that seem to present themselves. So didn't pursue my systemic training, although I was interested in how organisations worked from a systemic point of view. So I always kept that systemic thinking hat on, even though when I was working as a, as a principal officer and not, not in 
direct work with children and families. Um, but I started developing an interest in um, systemic approaches to child protection. And indeed, later on, when I did my final two years of the four year training, my dissertation was on systemic approaches to child sexual abuse. The field work I did as, as a case study for that dissertation was systemic group work with mothers and caregivers of young sexually abused children. And as far as I'm aware, I don't know if that's been replicated anywhere, but I did do some group work with under fives who'd been sexually abused along with their mothers or foster carers um, as a sort of a treatment, a systemic treatment approach in young sexual abuse. And um, it was it was uh, a tremendous opportunity. And that was done within Haringey Social Services. It wasn't till 1976, when I was then a team leader in Haringey Social Services, that I went on my foundation training, which was at the Institute of Group Analysis. And it was in 1977 that the Institute of Family Therapy was founded out of that foundation group that Robin Skinner had started. But it wasn't until 1984 that I was again exposed to systemic ideas. I went on a one day um, intensive, um, it might have been a four day intensive with David Campbell and Ros Draper about the Milan approach and that was all the rage in the early 80s in this country when the when Boscolo and Chiquin were coming over here and linking the different teams and uh, David Campbell and Ros Draper were showcasing the Milan method and it really really got me interested. The model itself was so wonderfully clear it seemed to me such a wonderfully clear model the five parts ritual, the, the, pre, the pre-session, the interview, the, t- the team thinking break, the post-session, uh, the uh, post-team reflection back to the family and then the post-session with the team again. Um, that kind of neatness really appealed to me and I could grasp it and obviously I had the chance to practice it on workshops like that. Um, and later on uh, so I, I did my second year at the uh, Tavistock which was um, maybe 86 and then I did the final two years um, with Ros Draper, David Campbell and Caroline Lindsay um, which was the Milan Systemic Family Therapy Training which was before the courses became MSc level but it was the equivalent but I trained very exclusively within the Milan Um, Later on, when I did get very involved with inpatient um, services, um, it really became clear that structural thinking was really helpful in working with children and families where the child or young person is in an inpatient setting, because the the context in which the child is living and and in which the parents are positioned away at a distance from their child, but yet so incredibly concerned about them, um, it alters the family structure in a way that has to be attended to. And that we as professionals working very intensively with the family to help that young person in an inpatient context have to create a structure where we make the family part of the clinical team. And I've I've written about that um, uh, later on. when I later on was working at Great Ormond Street, about building a team that includes the family in the team um, as a sort of structural manoeuvre. David Campbell was a huge influence on me. He was just a tremendous um, enabler and encourager and facilitator of my systemic training. And when he was both my tutor and my supervisor when I was doing that final two years at the Tavistock, And I can remember the first term of the third year, I was really struggling and I just couldn't believe that I would be able to learn this. I felt that I didn't have the systemic language at my fingertips. And I told him in a tutorial that I didn't think I could go on. And then he he was incredulous and said, well, why not? You're doing so well. And I said, well, you know, I can't seem if I... If I say my ideas in the group, they kind of fall on stony ground. And then if somebody else says it, 
three minutes later in the right way, it gets taken up. So I'm not using the right language. And, and he just said to me, well, we'll learn your language and you'll learn ours and there'll be a mix. And he was just talking about mutually influencing systems without using any jargon. And it encouraged me and I went on and really learned a lot. Sorry, it's just, it's a huge part of my learning. And um, I can remember f finishing the training and saying to him, well, what am I going to do without you to supervise me? When he said, well, you have me on your shoulder. You'll just say, well, what would David say to me now? And that's what I did. Just the other influencer that I want to um, con continue to sort of honour was um, John Burnham was the external examiner for that TAVI course and he was um, another tremendously encouraging figure uh, to so many people in the field but when I finished my training at um, the TAVI and John was encouraging of my considering teaching family therapy so it wasn't long after I'd qualified and I was working in in the CAM service in Tottenham and um, John encouraged me to come to KCC and do an apprenticeship in supervision on the KCC courses there and so I did a, an apprenticeship with Philippa Seligman um, and that was really really helpful and I did supervision at KCC and then I went back and did supervision at the TAVI and ultimately at IFT and uh, um, lots of other places too. But um, John Burnham was tremendously encouraging and um, I think he, he, the way he went about his external examiner role was, was just to kind of add to our learning. It wasn't just finding out what do you know and checking the gaps, but we, we learnt more through the process of the uh, of the Viber examination, so that was fantastic. I suppose, that I, as I'm talking about supervision, I'm, I'm reminded of another colleague from the Tavistock from way back, that was Barbara Dale, who always spoke about um, start from where the trainee is, start with what they know already, not with what you know and leading them there, but start with what they know and get interested in that and and that was another sort of touchstone i suppose one thing that i think i wouldn't be doing myself justice if i didn't highlight is the sort of the depth and breadth of the work that i've done in the last 15 years of my nhs um career which was really the links between mind and body so first of all when i left Ift and I went to St George's with the eating disorders work which was completely new to me but really fascinating and, and how children young people were expressing distress through the body by having the eating disorder that they were unfortunately afflicted with but that that eating disorder was a communication to the family that all was not well with them and then it gets out of hand and leads them to a hospital admission, you know, in the worst end of the continuum. And subsequently, when I left St George's and went to Great Ormond Street, I was able to continue that work, but in a broader palette, because the inpatient CAMS there was not exclusively eating disorders, but with a range of many other presentations of distress um, in children and young people, but some of them with the very extreme psychosomatic presentations and I found myself making connections between the eating disorders, the psychosomatic and the family communication theories and um, again I've written about that and I've always been very interested in the practice and the supervision of that area of work. Um, but the, the ideas that, that came to me really um, during that inpatient work in the NHS was Firstly, again, a just tremendous recapping of my valuing multidisciplinary teamwork, that family therapy and systemic practice on its own um, is very valuable, but it's not the whole story. And being able to put that together with clinical psychology colleagues, 
psychiatry colleagues, nursing colleagues, social work, all that in the mix was um, really my greatest sort of learning curve and, uh, and has remained something I respect and value very highly. And I'm still trying to do that, even though I'm now in independent, I'm in independent practice and um, mostly I'm working on my own. But I have very much used the um, thinking break approach. I uniformly use a thinking break within a family or couple or an individual session, even though I don't have a team to meet with. I meet with myself in another um, part of the house and think through everything I've discussed with the clients and come back with reflection that's different from what I've been offering in the, in the earlier part of the session. And that thinking break is um, just always a way of sifting through ideas, creating new connections, putting them in a form that connects with the family and then getting feedback from the family or the couple as to what they've heard themselves and each other saying during the session.